Wow. All I can say right now is momentum. This kid has momentum, and that's dangerous for the rest of the field. This kid is on fire. Setting his mark in history as one of the greatest ever. Brian Shaw! All right, so we're about ready to get into this workout. I'm gonna take uh, this opportunity to program the training, since I feel like I should do that, cool. you know? All right, well, let's, let's, let's flip a coin. Let's flip a coin. We can flip a coin, right. that's fine. I got one right that's here. Fine. Okay, let's see what we got. Ready? Yeah. Heads. Heads it is. You got Man. it. All right. All right. So I think the uh, first exercise is uh, safety squat bar squat. Have you ever done that? Nope. All right, perfect. I like, I like that. We'll, we'll keep that thing going here. <laughs> so, uh, and we're gonna do uh, box squats. Do you like those? Okay, sure, I can try those. Okay. I'll try those. So we'll put, uh, Let's add another variable. Let's put some chains on the bar. All right. Do you like that? Never used those before. Okay, perfect. All right. That's good. And we're gonna go on that, we'll go uh, eight sets of two. All right. And this will be, uh, we'll go for bar speed. So we'll just have to play with the weight a little okay. bit and see how that works. So that, that sounds pretty good to you? Just two reps? Yeah, eight, eight sets of two. All right. So that's, I mean, that, I feel like that's plenty of conditioning. Oh, all right. Yeah, okay. Okay, yep. okay. sure. No. Well, I mean, that's that's 16 <laughs> reps, eight times two, 16 reps. All right, sounds good. Yeah. We'll get some conditioning later. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll see. We'll see about that. We'll see how you feel after this. All right, all right. All right, so second, uh, let's go into a, uh, why don't we have you do a regular deadlift and I'll do a uh, straight leg deadlift. Okay. As a secondary movement. All yeah? Right. Does all that right. sound all right? Sure. So we'll go <clears throat> down and left. And then um, with that, we'll go, gosh, we need to give you some more reps. So why don't we, why don't we do like uh, uh, three sets of eight to 10? All right, sounds a little like better. That. Sounds a little better. Okay, we're getting all right, there. We're getting all right, there. All right, all right. So we'll do that here. And then um, from here, why don't we go into uh, some back attack and glute ham raise. Okay. You like glute ham raise? I've done glute ham raise and we're done the back attack. Okay, perfect. All right. I like, I like when you haven't done things. This yes. is giving me an Fantastic. advantage, I like that. Okay, <laughs> so we'll go back, attack. And this one we'll do, um, why don't we just do, we'll get up to the upper range of that, 10 reps. I mean, 10 reps is bordering on cardio, you feel like, right? All right. Yeah? Okay, sure. Okay, good. Right. I'm glad you agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> and then... Um, All right, how about handstand walking? Does it look like I want to walk on my hands? All right, how about pull-ups? Pull-ups are, are a no-go today. All right, how about burpees? No chance, good. Running? I don't, I don't, I don't really want to, unless we're running with a big weight, no chance. <laughs> right, how about double unders? No thanks, yeah. Box jumps. Box jumps are out also. Okay. We'll go, we'll go 10 minutes for the last piece. We'll, uh, 10, mi 10, 10 minutes. minutes, 10 minutes total. Okay, okay, right. total, okay. So we'll go, we'll do 20 calories on the rower. All right. And we'll do 15. Kettlebell swings. You're gonna alternate minutes. So on one minute, you do 20 calories on the rower. On okay. the next minute, you do 15 kettlebell swings. And you're gonna go back and forth with me for 10 minutes. It's not too and long. We, we get a break or we don't get a break? You get a break if you finish that in a minute. So if I do 20 calories, then I can have a break? Yes. Before? Before getting on the so kettlebells and doing 15 kettlebell swings. We're talking swings. seconds of break, not... You get like 30 seconds rest after the kettlebell swing. Man, that sounds like so much rest. That's <laughs> awesome. That's great. So, since I'm going to be burning all these calories, you and I are going to have to make them up together after, after we're done training, yeah? 
Eat. Eat a, what do you want to eat? Eat a steak. Steak, I like right, it. We'll do it. Steak, eat. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five is eat, I like that, yeah. This seems a little ridiculous, but this yeah. is good, so. Cool. Put it in, good stuff, man. Sweet. All right, so the first uh, first thing we're gonna do here is a safety squat bar, squat. And I know you said you hadn't done this, it's just basically a specialty bar. And this is actually, for me, this is the first bar I ever bought on my own because I felt like it was so functional and it would carry over to so many things. So what I like about this really, number one, first and foremost, is the way that it sits on your back, it makes you engage your back so much more than if you're a low bar squatter with a straight bar. So it's a lot harder. The first time somebody that's never used this before, the first time they touch it compared to a normal bar, typically the weights are a lot lower and you, it, you, you'll feel that basically as you sit down, it tries to drive your face in the floor. So you have to engage your back and stay a lot tighter to get back up. Okay. So that's really, um, really the primary thing with this. And, and the way that I think of it too, is this is huge because for strong man, it carries over to so many things because it builds up the posterior chain. So um, your, your deadlift benefits in a huge way. If you've never used it before and you're used to just doing a normal bar squat, you throw this in, deadlift goes through the roof. It just, it makes you build up so, so much more strength. I really prefer to do it with a box. There's, people go back and forth on the box and whether you do it with a pause or not. Really the box, number one is a depth gauge and it's, it's there to, what I like to use it for is breaking the stretch shortening cycle. Okay. So you're not dropping into the hole and springing right out of it. So basically it's just with a, about a one second pause and then it makes you pause the squat and engage quickly. So it builds, I feel that it, it builds strength, especially with a deadlift, power coming off the floor, or for us, any type of um, event where you have to pick something up. So like a tire flip or stones, I really feel like the starting strength that's, that's built here by coming off of the box really carries over to so many other things. So, I mean, in a nutshell, I think if I had to pick one bar to always squat with, it'd be the safety squat bar. I mean, there's, I know there's a lot of the variations, but you know, the, the other, I'd say the final thing really is the fact that the way that this sets and the way that you can hold it, it does not mess up your shoulders, right? So if anybody that has shoulder mobility issues and they're trying to get under a normal straight bar, it just rips your shoulders up. And it's really, to be fair, unless, unless you're getting close to a powerlifting meet or, or you're gonna have a straight bar squat, why? Why would you do it, you know? So this is, this is something that can be hugely beneficial. And for me, I really feel like it, it's built my strength up so much. And as I, I've had to transition back to a straight bar, and I feel like I only get stronger when I go back to a straight bar with a safety squat bar. So awesome, awesome, awesome movement. That's why I picked this. I'm, right. I'm really excited for you to uh, experience it here and, uh, and see how you feel. Let's do it. Cool. So we're just finishing up here. Uh, did some basically speed squats with the safety squat bar off the box. Um, you know, with this, a lot of people have the misconception that it's always, always, always about how much weight you throw onto the bar. And it's not about that. It's about how you move the bar um, and especially being explosive. So, you know, Ben, this is, uh, he's working up a little bit here, which is awesome. He did most of his working sets 
um, with uh, this bar 75, so you'd normally with two plates would be 225, so you have more like 255 uh, bar weight plus the chain weight. And um, you know, obviously, chain weights all are, it all is dependent on how high you lift the bar. So you know, for when I get underneath here, I'm probably picking up a little bit more chain than Ben is, but that's fine. It's it all works together. So if you're training with guys that are different sizes, you have to find the right height that works and make it happen. So. You know, I did did my sets with uh, what 435 plus. We have uh, close to 120 in chain. So, you know, I'm not not going crazy heavy, but I also have to compete um, now in less than two weeks, and I haven't got to train a whole lot. So I have to try to manage my schedule, manage my training, and that's real life stuff, man. I mean, it's it's something where you know a lot of guys out there or, or women. You have jobs, you have responsibilities, you have other things to do. I have that same stuff and a lot of people assume I can just do whatever I want, but when I'm on the road, um, traveling, trying to get training in, this is what happens. So I have to try to manage uh, my training sessions and uh, you know, I'm sure Ben does the same and we're just getting it in, we're having fun and this is a good example of getting good training in and making it happen. So ba basically, when you're doing uh, speed work, what you wanna try to do uh, or what I've always tried to do and had the most success with is between two and three reps and with probably between six and ten sets something in that range so you try to pick the weight typically for me the bar weight is roughly 50% give or take uh, of my one rep max uh, somewhere in that ballpark 40 to 50% but again really the uh, major thing here is the bar speed so if you start putting more weight on and the bar speed slows down you need to lighten it up and be more explosive and look at how you're moving the bar the other thing is is the rest periods between sets you're going to have the most success and the most benefit if you keep your rest periods at or below 60 seconds so from the time you wrap the bar to when you lift again, you wanna to try to get as close as you can to 60 seconds, probably 75 to 90 at the absolute max, but that's gonna give you the maximum benefit when you're doing speed work. So we're, we're just finishing up here, and I don't know if you can see, I'm wearing black. My shirt is uh, is soaked, right? So if I squeeze that out, that's, that's all soaked. And um, Ben is, you can see I'm dripping sweat. He's, he's glowing, right? He hasn't, he hasn't really sweated through his shirt yet. Maybe a little bit. It's coming through. It's coming through just a touch, <laughs> just a touch. But um, anyway, you know, it's, I don't, I don't know what to say about that really. You know, Mark, Mark, might, Mark Bell might say that uh, I'm kind of uh, overweight and out of shape. Obese. Obese even. Do you hear that in the background? Yeah. But I, I would just say it's, it's power, you know? So that's all, that's all it is. Obese. Yeah. you into a deadlift once or two. Okay. I'm so excited about this. All right.